morning. Good morning. Good morning. Unfortunately, you're going to have to sit through my funny story before I start again. <laughs> um, this morning I got up nice and early because I was thinking about doing um, this talk for both services. So I got up and um, I was prayerfully considering and asking, you know, are my words worthy? Are they important for others to hear? So, um, since I didn't get a lightning bolt, I thought, yes, so I got changed. <laughs> and, and so I got ready to go, and I went out to my car, and my car is dead. <laughs> so, um, I thought it was a sign, but we have a second car. <laughs> so, it started, and so that's why I'm here today. So, um, I'd like to thank Pastor Sal and uh, Tim Schwartz and Larry Levine for the invitation to share a story with you today. Um, some of you, I've met friends up here already, it's so amazing, from back home. Uh, my husband and I have been coming up to Douglas for over 20 years, and finally about six years ago we bought a small place in Douglas. And uh, Tim and Larry uh, invited me to this wonderful church last year. And um, I said it this morning, and I'll say it again, I have fallen in love with this church family. And I love to come here, and I love to be part of it. My church at home is Flossmore Community Church, and that's in Flossmore, Illinois. And we've had a Stephen Ministry program for many years. It started in 1990. And so I thought I'd share with you, first of all, what I heard from the project when trying to learn about it and share with the congregation. And this is what the type of thing I heard. It's a program that provides a distinctly Christian caring ministry by trained lay people. It was developed in the 70s by a pastor who was meeting all of the day-to-day um, -day and critical crisis needs of his congregation, but he had this tug at his heart that his congregation needed more. And how could he provide that, or how could he make that possible for continued care after crisis? So he developed this very rigorous training um, for lay caregivers. And it's not to replace the pastor. Um, it is to enhance what the pastor does. So what I learned was um, there are over 10,000 churches internationally who have the Stephen Ministry Program. Over 55,000 leaders have been trained, like Tim, and over a half million um, Stephen ministers and the caregivers, um, like Larry, have uh, been trained, and well over a million people have received care, like me. People from congregations request care for many things. It can be for grief over the loss of a loved one, illness, uh, job loss, divorce, retirement, difficulty in parenting, maybe caring for a critically or terminally ill loved one. In other words, it's, it's when we're hurting that we might ask for a student minister. So when I heard all this, and this is many years ago, I thought, wow, how great is that? I, what a great gift of ministry to our church, to our congregation, and to our community. And in the back of my mind, I was saying, but I don't need that. So fast forward um, a little bit, I was both um, right and wrong in this whole thing, and that was our, even today, so for many years, but even today, our student ministers just make it an, uh, an incredible difference in our congregation, in our community. And the part I didn't know, the part I was wrong about was um, I needed it. So I'll share that with you. The first time was October 11th, 1998. And the second time was just this year again. It'll be 18 years this October that my husband Barry and I um, had returned from a long weekend of bird watching. It was very fun. Just so you know, if you don't know, if you don't think bird watching is fun, talk to me about it. <laughs> it is. And we were just getting resettled, getting unpacked, and the phone rang. So, thinking nothing, I answered it. And the next words that I heard that changed our lives forever was, um, your brother's dead, and it was suicide. And um, he was 44 years old, married, and two beautiful girls. And we had no warning. We had no warning. To say we were in crisis and hurting was an understatement. My mom had lost her only son. My siblings, our brother. My husband, 
his brother-in-law, my sister-in-law, her husband, and my nieces lost their dad. Our family circled to grieve. Our friends surrounded us. Our church family showered us with flowers and meals and cards and hugs, and everyone cried with us. Growing up, of five kids, I was the peacemaker and the problem solver, so I felt it was my job to take care of everyone else. And after months of crisis management, and we were in crisis for months, and trying to com comfort everyone else, I realized that I needed help. And it needed to be from someone who was not grieving from the same loss as I was. My faith, faith has always been central in my life, so I knew I needed to talk to somebody who shared my faith. Someone that could help me remember that God was in this mess with me, and that there was a way out, and um, this was not the, the end, even though it felt so black. With Barry's encouragement, I called my pastor again. I'm, uh, he should have been screening his calls by then, but um, <laughs> to seek his guidance. Um, and it just so happened that he was also a Stephen minister leader in our church. So I shared with him all that was going, you know, he knew what was going on, but that I wasn't questioning my faith, and I wasn't questioning God. I wasn't angry with God. I wasn't angry with my brother. But I needed to find a way to move forward with my life and learn how to live life without my brother. I needed someone to listen and remind me that God was right beside me. I didn't have to handle everything alone. I didn't have to be strong for everybody else and that I could and would heal and life would go on. And it was soon after that I met my Stephen minister, Pat. She cried with me, she prayed with me, she listened patiently as I lamented over and over and over the what ifs, if I had only, if I had just. All those things that keep running through your mind. But the key was she just listened. She didn't try and fix it because it wasn't fixable. She wasn't judgmental of my brother's suicide, which many were. And she quietly walked beside me through my journey of grief. In time, healing did come. Life did go on, albeit differently. And 18 years later, the tears still come easily. But God's peace did return. And now as Labor Day approaches, I'll be celebrating the first anniversary of losing my mom. And besides my wonderful husband walking beside me through this, guess who else is walking beside me through this new journey of grief? Pat has been with me. I believe the Stephen Ministry Program is just a huge blessing for any church and every church. And the fact that you have it here, I just see it as such a blessing and for the community. And I pray that when you find yourself hurting, that you'll turn to Pastor Sal and the Stephen ministers and help have them help you find a, a faith-based comfort, strength, healing, and most of all, someone to listen.